Spinal stenosis and walking problems go hand in hand. In fact, walking problems, along with problems standing, are the most common symptoms of lumbar spinal stenosis. Now, cervical spinal stenosis or stenosis in your neck can also cause problems, but we're going to focus primarily on lumbar or lower back spinal stenosis in this video and also tell you a little bit about cervical spinal stenosis and tips you can use to walk more comfortably if you do have stenosis. Now, if you find this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel. We're dedicated to helping people stay active, mobile, and healthy without relying on pain medications, injections, or surgeries. So first of all, what is stenosis? Well, there are actually two types of stenosis. The word stenosis actually means a narrowing of a space. That's what the medical term stenosis means. But in regards to your spine, spinal stenosis, there are two types of that. There's central canal stenosis, which if you're looking down the, the vertebral canal from a top view, you have the space where the spinal cord runs. And if you look at the vertebral levels, it's where those holes get smaller and closer together. And when that happens, it can pinch on the spinal cord and give you some trouble walking. Now, there's another type of spinal stenosis called lateral stenosis or foraminal stenosis. And that's where the spaces where the nerves come out on either side of the spine, where they get narrower. Now, that can be caused by a lot of things, but often degenerative disc disease is the main cause of that lateral stenosis. So what causes the central stenosis? where the spaces get narrower. Well, you can't actually have bone spurs that come around the inside of the spinal canal. And unfortunately, there's not a great non-surgical way to relieve that problem. But the more common problem is more of a functional stenosis, where one vertebrae starts to slip forward on the other. And if you're looking straight down the canal and the two foramen or the holes are lined up in the vertebrae, the, the space is at its widest. But if you start slipping one vertebrae forward on the other, it makes that opening functionally smaller. So a good way to help if you have central canal spinal stenosis is keeping those vertebrae from slipping. Now, if we're talking about your back, what causes the vertebrae to slip? If you're standing in a lot of extension like this, it puts the lower levels below the arch of the curve in a position like that. And the upper levels, in a position like that. So the upper levels above that apex of the curve are likely to slip forward, making one foramen kind of slip forward on the other. So a simple solution to relieve that is to de decrease the amount of arch. Now that's oftentimes why you see people with spinal stenosis either bent over with a cane or bent over a walker or walking in the grocery store, leaned over a grocery cart, because it helps flatten that curve and make things not slip quite so much. And that's actually a good idea to use something to help you walk, particularly if you do have trouble with your balance or you've fallen in the past or you're at a higher risk for falls, that using something to ensure your safety, it doesn't make you look old, it allows you to do the things that you wouldn't otherwise be able to do. Now that brings us to a good point, is walking good or bad for spinal stenosis? You'd think that you should avoid doing things that hurt, but by avoiding walking when you have spinal stenosis, it actually deconditions you more, it makes your muscles weaker, and it makes you less able to walk. So even though it hurts to walk with spinal stenosis, it's a good idea to walk some, but there's a good strategy of how to do that. Now, first of all, you do want to kind of open up the spaces in your lower back a little bit by doing what I said, just kind of flattening out your back like that. Whether you have to lean on a cane or a walker to help you do that a little bit, um, you may or may not have to do that. But the technique definitely matters when you're walking if you have spinal stenosis. Now, another thing that you need to know is that more is not always better. That you wanna go up to the point that it brings on symptoms. And the symptoms of spinal stenosis are usually either back pain or more commonly, fatigue or pain or weakness or tingling or numbness in the legs. The leg symptoms are actually more common when walking in spinal stenosis than the back pain itself. So you want to walk up to the point where you start to develop symptoms and then sit down. When you sit down in a chair, 
it flattens out the curve in your back, takes the pressure off the nerves, and it allows you to kind of get the feeling back in your legs, feel like the strength is coming back, and then you may be able to get up and walk a little bit longer. Now those rollator walkers that have a seat on them, they're great for people with spinal stenosis because you can walk as long as you need to. When you get tired, you just put the seat down and sit down on it, and you can rest for a little bit. Then after you've rested and you've gotten your stamina back, you can get back to walking again. So that is tips to use when you have the central canal spinal stenosis. Now, interestingly, if you have the lateral stenosis or foraminal stenosis, a lot of the tips are fairly similar. When you lean backwards like that or have a lot of arch in your back, it also narrows the spaces where the nerves come out on the side. And so a good thing to do if you have lateral stenosis or foraminal stenosis in your back is also to lean forward when you're walking. Now, if you're walking with a cane, you may wonder which side you should use it on. And central canal stenosis, because it affects the spinal cord and the vertebrae slips straight forward, it usually affects both legs to some extent. Lateral stenosis usually affects the side that the nerve is being pinched on. It can get pinched on both sides, but if only one foramen is narrowed or stenosed, then that's the side that you're going to have more weakness on. So you'd think you'd kind of use the cane on the side that's weaker, but that's actually not the case. That when you use the cane on this side, it makes you lean more towards the weak side and you actually end up putting more pressure on that leg. Versus if you can use the cane in the opposite hand, you can sort of lean away from it. The force of the cane helps push you up this way, whereas the weakness in this hip naturally makes you fall that way. So this is helping to support against that and prevent you from tipping the other way. Now, that seems like it may not make sense, but try it out for yourself and let me know if it works. You can leave a comment below if you've tried any of these tips and they help you out. So those are a couple of tips to be able to walk more comfortably with spinal stenosis. Now, a lot of people wonder, are there exercises that can help people who have spinal stenosis to be able to walk better? And largely there are. There are several good exercises. I have made lots of different posts on stretches for back pain, and a lot of those apply if you do have spinal stenosis. So the stretches you want to do are one, things that round out your lower back like that, that may be sitting in a chair and bending forwards, or doing a child's pose where you rock back on all fours, like the yoga pose. Um, anything that flattens your back and lengthens these muscles in the back is good to do if you have spinal stenosis in your lower back. Additionally, abdominal strengthening exercises where you tighten your core or pull your belly button in to help you flatten the back using your own muscles are also good to do if you have spinal stenosis. Finally, your hip flexors, when they're tight, they pull you into that anterior tip where your spine is going to slide forward like that. And so you want to make sure that your hip flexors are not too stiff. And so doing stretches for your hip flexors where you have one leg back, make sure to keep your back nice and flat and stretch this way. If you're doing the other leg, roll under and stretch this way so you have a nice flat back. You should feel the stretch right in the front of your thigh or in the front of your hip there. You should not feel pain in your back. And if you go too far, you may feel the pain in your back. So that's how you tell if you're going too far. Now, I've also made a separate video on that topic of four different ways to stretch your hip flexors. And I'll link to that in the comments here. Now, what about spinal stenosis in your neck? I mentioned that that can also cause trouble walking. And in most cases, if you have spinal stenosis in your neck, particularly the lateral stenosis in your neck, it affects your arms. It doesn't really affect your legs that much. But if you have central canal stenosis in your neck and it starts to pinch on the spinal cord, it can actually start to cause trouble with the nerves as they're going down the spinal cord and going down to the legs. And one of the problems if you have that central canal stenosis in your neck or something called cervical myelopathy where it's pinching on the spinal cord is it can cause sort of a disturbed ataxic or unsteady gait where you feel like you're kind of staggering, sort of like you've had too much to drink, but you haven't. And so if that's the case, you want to do things to open up the spinal canal in the neck. Now, the analog to the low back is the neck up here, 
And so if this makes things better in the low back, then this type of position where you bring your head down that way can help open up the spaces in the neck. Additionally, doing neck stretches where you pull your head down in a position like that. Not like this, where you're yanking everything around one level, but where you flatten your neck. And you're not so much pulling on the back of your head, but more pushing on your forehead to help flatten the neck out. And I've got another video with that stretch as well that I'll link to for you. Um, what else can you do for spinal stenosis in the neck to help you walk better? Well, hands-on things like manual therapy to help loosen up the muscles in the neck. That's good if you have stiff muscles in the back of your neck, as well as if you have stiff muscles in your lower back. And we do a lot of hands-on treatment for people with spinal stenosis here at More for Life. So if you need a little bit more help for your spinal stenosis to help you walk better, you've tried some of the tips in this video and maybe they've helped a little bit but haven't helped all the way, then we'd be happy to help you out. If you're in St. Louis, give us a call or if you're somewhere else, visit us on our website. We have lots of helpful, useful tips and make sure to subscribe to this channel so you get notified of our future videos. Thanks so much for listening and have a great day.